Let's start this movie off with a big bang. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Lily Arter's video. <laughs> Thank you for starting my video. Okay, um, I'll switch spots with you now. Okay. Bye. Welcome. Today we are working on recycling big cookie tin container things. I think that's what they're called. We're going to be transforming them into some cute little storage containers for my pantry. I'm going to be using my Cricut Explorer Air 2 machine and I'm also going to be showing you how to do a super cool like white and black enamel look which is super easy to do. Um, okay, let's get started. Okay, so to make these recycled storage containers, you'll need some sandpaper, a scoring pad, some gloss white spray paint, some matte black spray paint, matte black vinyl, transfer paper, cookie tin containers, and Vaseline. I picked up these cookie tin containers at the thrift store for only a few dollars. Uh, I actually had a few that I had picked up earlier this year from the thrift store. They usually have way more during Christmas time. I had planned on making some modern planters with them, but I changed my mind because I actually need um, storage containers way more. I started off by using some 120 grit sandpaper and roughed up the whole outside area and the lids as well. I then masked off the inside of each container so it doesn't get any overspray on it. To remove all the dust, I sprayed them down with some Windex and wiped them down. I let them dry completely and used some matte spray paint to give them two coats of matte paint. I made sure both the lids and containers were dry completely before attaching some metal handles to the lids. I actually found these handles at Hobby Lobby. They have so many options to pick from. I was very close to getting these white ones but decided to go with the black ones because they're more simple. To attach these handles to the lid, we held each handle down while we drilled a hole. We then used a nut and bolt to secure the handle to the lid. Here's how it looked on the bottom. After letting the paint settle in for a few hours, I was ready to apply the Vaseline. I used a Q-tip and applied it around the edges, um, applying it in long strokes. A little actually goes a long way. I tried applying it with my fingers on one container and it was way too much. I ended up having like blotchy areas of just black later on. Um, but Oleg used a Q-tip to apply it onto his container and the Q-tip worked so much better and gave it a more elegant look. Okay, now I was ready to spray paint them white. I went with gloss white spray paint to mimic the real enamel look as much as possible. Okay, so if you haven't tried these spray paint bottles, the nozzles on them are by far my favorite. They spray wide and give such an even coat. Um, they actually feel like you're using a real spray gun. If you've never used one before, these are pretty darn close. Um, you can even spray them at like a slanted angle and it sprays just as even. I let the containers dry overnight and cut a piece of my scoring pad to start sanding it a little. The plan was to kind of rub off the white paint uh, in the areas where I had previously applied the Vaseline in. The scoring pad didn't really do the trick. I ended up having um, to try like using something sharp. I actually tried my nail at one point and realized that a penny works best for this to remove um, white paint in the areas that you have applied the Vaseline. I simply just scored the penny over areas that look like I had applied the Vaseline on and the paint slid right off. Um, don't worry about removing extra paint. It actually doesn't remove paint where you didn't apply Vaseline on it. Once I felt like I had the look I wanted, um, I used the scoring pad to gently remove any flaky paint that was stuck around the edges. Don't forget to do this to the lids and the handle as well. And that's it. Now that my container was ready, I went into Cricut Design Space and typed out the word potatoes. I then picked my font, which was Didot, and sent it off to my Cricut Explorer to get cut. I then grabbed some matte vinyl and applied it to my strong grit mat. You can also use a regular mat um, for your vinyl. This was just what I had on hand and it works just as good. I then made sure that I had my fine point blade installed and set my cut settings one click over the vinyl setting and clicked continue and Cricut did all the work. Okay, so I know uh, it can be a little bit overwhelming if you're just jumping into using your Cricut for the first or second time. I actually did a whole video. That was my phone. 
I actually did a video when I had just gotten this machine, um, all the basic questions, jumping into it, how I set it up and all of the above. I will add a video link right here somewhere for you if you wanna check it out. Next, I weeded out my design with my weeding tool. If you've never tried this weeding tool, it makes the process so much easier. You simply poke and pull. I then cut some transfer tape to size and applied it onto my design. I used my Cricut scraper tool to press the tape into the design and gently remove the transfer tape away from the backing, making sure the letters stayed attached to the tape. I actually notice that it helps sometimes if you flip the tape face down and pull the backing away from the tape. Some areas might need a little bit of help staying on the tape. Now it was ready to go onto my tin container. I propped up the container with something so it doesn't keep moving around. Then I gently just kind of eyeballed it and <laughs> applied it onto my container. I also pressed it down with my scraper tool and gently removed the transfer tape. And that's it. That's how easy it is to upcycle an old tin container into enamel inspired decor. I can't imagine having to paint these letters on by the way. Um, the Cricut machine saved me so much time on this project. I'm actually not crazy about farmhouse decor, but I really do like this look. Enamel decor is definitely my weakness. To me, it just seems like it's such a timeless look. What do you guys think? That sums up everything for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. And hopefully this inspires you to pull out your Cricut and make some fun projects. If you stuck around for this long, you're awesome. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. I have a DIY headboard that me and Tony are working on right now for our bedroom. If you're not following me on Instagram, I share all of my DIYs on there before they even go on YouTube. So don't forget to follow me there. I will see you guys all next time. Bye.